Hi, everybody, and welcome. This is usually our Wednesday show, and I had to change it to Thursday. Hi, Margaret. Hi, Teresa. And today, I also have not only something new to show you from Authentique, but it's really clever. I am so happy with what they've done. And um, so I'll come back here and show you the little project in just a moment. But when I saw this collection, and I picked it up yesterday, ran home to my studio and got busy. Um, the collection is not on the site yet. And I'm going to go through the collection with you before we start on the project. Uh, the collection, so this collection is a little bit different. Totally different. And what it is, is it also coordinates, I'm going to show you, this is magical. So it's going to coordinate beautifully with magical. They've done, you'll see this in some red, I have to put my hand there every time. You'll see that they've done some reds and greens, just like it. everything just matches. Goes beautifully with magical. So this is magical. I'll be referring back and forth and I will be using some of magical. But this is called Christmas Greetings. If you are a card maker, you're going to be jumping up and down right now. If you're not a card maker, this is going to turn you into one. And with the little project, you're going to see how easy. What um, Authentique has done is they've made six sheets. And in a collection kit, what you're going to get is um, three sheets of each of the cut aparts or four. You know, I cut into it. I should have counted first. Hold on. It doesn't. Uh... Well, it's 18 or 24. I think it's 18. So you're going to get three of each. Um, we're going to start with the first one. And the sayings on this is so cute. It says Christmas is doing a little something extra. And this is going to help you with all those little extras because like I said, if you're a card maker, you're going to jump for joy. If you're not, you're going to become one. The cut aparts, this is all cut aparts. You're going to get three of each, but you will still have like the back side, which is usable. But you're going to have all these lovely cut aparts. In addition, hi, Sherry. In addition to the magical collection, which this coordinates just it doesn't like that one. It coordinates just beautifully with the magical collection, which my camera just needs that focus point. And it's going to, it just goes really well with it. So I'm kind of combining the two today. Anyway, the first one, this is number six. That's the back. The front has very um, vintage scenes of Christmas past. Just love it. It's like the um, cracker, nutcracker, and fireplace. So that's number six. Number five, we've got our Christmas cooking going on. Christmas baking, uh, decorating the tree with the sugar cookies. Isn't this adorable? Hi, hi, Judy and Kathy and everyone that's been popping in. Uh, the back side. Is just um, really awesome. I, I think it looks like the tips of frosting. All the different designs you can make. So again, this coordinates with magical, but it is six sheets of nothing but cut apart. And you can use the back too. It was really hard to cut into the one cut apart. So I believe it's three. I hope I, maybe if Sam or Brett pops on, it's three or four sheets of each in the collection kit. Or you can buy it in a paper pad. And here, so it went red and green, just like Magical does. Love this one. So we have, um, of course, what Christmas is all about. And on the back, you've got some beautiful poinsettias. And that's what I really like about um, putting them together. We've got the black background of poinsettias. Then we have the cream, more of an antique ivory. Hi, Tricia. So those beautiful scenes. So again, fabulous for cards. Then we have more of your uh, festival of lights. Maybe you're going out uh, this year. Christmas caroling. 
great for banners too so you're going to see some great banners now this sheet love the back that's what i used on this one and i'll show you in just a moment so i did use the back and then i i got magical out and i'm like this just coordinates so well with magical and that was the whole idea so again wonderful <laughs> Cherry's my best friend, by the way, Sally. Wonderful. <laughs> Just had to get that little snippet in. Wonderful. Uh, again, if you're a card maker, if you're not, you're going to be because you're going to love this little project. And of course, this is the one that inspired this one. I'm telling you, I got home from Authentic, ran into my studio and had to get this created because I fell in love. You'll see. Well, there's actually one more after this. This is the one I'm using today. I'm using the green today. This is so adorable. The back side. You have Christmas trees, reindeers, partridge. Again, very, very woodsy. Very pretty. Love it. Hi, Penny. And this one. So I've already used the two sheets. So you have the three. Here we have our furry friends for furry and bright. My first card set. And just adorable. We have the puppies. We have the kittens. We have the Britneys. I raised Britneys. I just love these. I, well, they could be a hunting dog too. We've got the kitties mischievy, being mischievy, mischievous around the puppies. Just adorable. Santa, furry and bright. And of course, Santa Paws is coming to town. So I would love that um, they did these to go with. Again, it's going to still go with magical the colors are all the same that's what's just fabulous about this maybe you're getting a puppy for Christmas or a kitten for Christmas um, Dina you get three of each so I think there's so there's 18 because there's six look at the plaid looks wonderful just it's just great again it's going to just really stretch your um your cut aparts they're all three by four um i would use on this for cardstock i would use the green if you're using artisan green with country craft creation oh and this is not on the website yet it was just picked up yesterday so we'll be hitting your local scrapbook stores and it has already hit country craft creations but it's not online yet because i needed to show it first you can use um, the Artisan Green Craft. I use black. I do like the black with it. It just made everything pop from Santa's boots to the wording. Um, you could even use a blue. A denim blue would look great. Depending on, actually, all your cut aparts have that blue. So a denim blue would just look beautiful. You've got blue all over through this. Again, denim blue Artisan. And you even have it in the light. Christmas carols. So if you wanted to change that, hi Edith. Hi Edith. So if you wanted to change it and go for a little bit more, otherwise the spectrum, you're going to use uh, crocodile green, um, ladybug. You can use so many colors with this. Okay, now let's look at oh the sticker sheet. So this this is strictly your cut aparts. You're under um, it's called Christmas greetings. Again, the collection kit has. 18 of them so you get three of each design plus what's on the backs whoops whoops you do have patterns on the back okay, that's on the back of the puppies sticker sheet this is the sticker sheet from a magical Christmas but it goes with your cut aparts so you definitely want to to get at least two or three maybe in four because when the sticker sheets are gone they're always gone so grab your sticker sheets so that you can have it with your cards and i did use it because it's going to be useful for both collections hi mary so now on to our project now this project it, it's only five and a half inches high four and a half wide um after we fold it and i did use one of the stickers because it's going to be a gift isn't this cute Great gift for, uh, I know our kids are back in school. Uh, this was just for my stash. Neighbors, or just for yourself, or maybe if you're in swaps and you just want a gift. So our little box will open. And on the right-hand side, so these are the three by four cut aparts. This is where I said, this is a quick, easy card. Um, I like this 
size so maybe cards maybe you, you need not quite a card but you need a gift tag but the gift tag isn't enough so you need a perfect card um, and I've already put these together the cut apart is called Christmas greetings and don't forget this will stay recorded so you'll be able to go back and watch this when it ends and this is from the the sheet of the pets number one there's Santa with the kitty in his beard I did use the white artisan cardstock for my uh, writing space love it your cards are three by four, so I cut my cards down to two and seven eighths by three and seven eighths. There's the little I, I hunting dogs. They're Britneys. They look just like the Britneys I raised many years ago. There we have our kitten in the stocking, and love it. Okay, those will fit and I did six and I'm going to show you a really quick easy way to create these cards You may already know it, but it's one way I do it just because I need to get it done now pull out one envelope So I'm going to show you how to make the coin envelopes You don't have to use an envelope punch board. You don't have to use any of that We're just going to do the scoring put your little card in Close it and you can even put a sticker on the back score tape glue it down. Uh, you can mail this You can mail this or you can just attach it to the gift with your coin envelope. I put them in upside down to hold the flap shut. And that is what we are now going to make. And you're going to see how um, fun and quick you can make a bunch of these. Wrap them in your um, cellophane bags. Makes just a really nice gift. So you will want some ribbon to hold it shut. And I've already got... Uh, my cards prepared. I did I did five of them because I'm going to show you how I cut up the cut aparts. This one is from the woodland. I call them the woodland animals or the nature page number five. No, number two. And you'll notice the green background. So this time though, I used the back of the, the animals um, for the inside. And then this was back the back of one of the other new cut aparts. But this time I'm just going to use my papers from the Magical Collection. So I did pre-cut them. And you'll notice some of these from other projects we've done. How cute is that? The woodland. See how well this goes with the woodland animals from Magical? Get started. Super simple. I'm going to have you cut a piece of cardstock. That is five and a half by ten inches. And that's going to be the case. Sorry, I, just, I buried everything. <laughs> so five and a half by ten. That is for this part. So if you're jotting these down, just grab yourself a notebook. Same thing I do. Um, the box or the, the book is five and a half by ten. And the two pockets on the inside, you want two of these. Five and three quarters by three and three quarters. And that's going to hold, it's the perfect size for, for the envelopes and the cards. So we're going to start by scoring our five and a half by ten. So if you have that cut. And I did not write down my score marks. So let me open my box. Whoops. Didn't mean to do that. Oh, four and a half by five and a half. So four and a half by five and a half. That's our first score. And then we will go on to the two that are five and three quarters by three and three quarters. Super simple. You're just going to do three sides at one half and one. Turn one half and one. This is going to create our box. Hi, Sarah. One half and one. That's what that will look like. Do this thing. This thing sheds. And our second piece. One half inch and one inch. 
one half and one. One half and one. Now for the box, that's all the scoring, but I want to show you how I do the cards because um, doing each one individual can get to be monotonous, right? Totally monotonous. Hi, Kimberly. This is the brand new collection by Authentic. It's just called uh, Christmas Greetings. And it's not even on the website yet. And I'm combining it with Authentic Magical Christmas. This is just all the cut aparts. It's so awesome. So awesome. So what I do to make six of these from one sheet of 12 by 12. I'm just putting my 12 by 12 right in my scoreboard. No, I've got some really bright sun coming in, don't I? There we go. See if that helps. We're going to score this at three inches. I turn this around. I'm going to score it again at three inches. This is going to make it so you don't even have to. Uh, fold each card individual after we're done scoring that we're going to go ahead and burnish those two score lines we just created and basically it will fold in the center now i have a bigger cutter i use but i'm going to go ahead and cut it on my little one so you can see what i'm doing so you've created a gatefold here, but our cards are three by four. So they are three inches wide. We've created that and they are six inches long. So all you have to do is open. Doesn't matter what side you start on and we'll cut this at six. Now we can go through and cut at four. And you're going to get three from each side. They're all folded, all ready to go. And you don't have to sit there and reburnish each one individually. All I do is give it a, another burnish to get them all down. And we want to do the same thing now with the second one that we've already Scored and, and burnished once. And we'll cut two pieces at four. And that gives us our next set of three. Super simple. So you don't have to sit there and do each single card. Just from one sheet of paper. There's your three by fours that are going to turn into these. Now, the next is our envelope. So we want to create our envelope. I kind of do the same thing with my 12 by 12. We want to, this just saves me when I'm doing something like this. Find my. Um, it saves me from having to do each one individual. So I'm going to do it as a full sheet and I'll do one individual for you. Because what you want for your envelope, um, each envelope is eight and a quarter by five and seven eighths. So I'm going to just score my 12 by 12 at one half inch. And then I'm going to score it again at looking at my measurements, four and three fourths. Then I'm going to turn it. I'm going to score it at we got our four and three fourths. And over here is my eight and a fourth. Sorry. You will have a piece left, but that's okay. Then we're going to turn it and score it at um, our two inches 
I just score it all the way down. I can use this for little um, tags or anything else that I want. And then five and a half. And I probably, if you're new, I probably shouldn't have shown you this way because it can be confusing. Two and five and a half. So um, then I'm just going to cut it at five and seven eighths and five and seven eighths and you'll have your two pieces. But I just realized if you're new, that probably didn't make any sense to you. And I apologize. So I'm going to just do one at a time. So we're going to cut this at five and seven eighths by eight and a fourth. Okay, after I do this, I'll go back and cut the other paper. And I shouldn't have done that. See, because the whole thing is you can end up with two if you cut it correctly. And um, sometimes my brain gets ahead of me, so ignore that part. Let's just put this in the eight and a quarter inch side at the top. And we're going to score it two inches and five and a half. Showing this first would have been better. Then one half and four and three fourths. See, because this is five and seven eighths, when you when you score that um, twelve by twelve, you can just cut them each at five and seven eighths and have two pieces and only score once. So now that should make better sense. So, for instance, you would end up with your two pieces. Let's start with the box. Let's not start with our envelope. We've already scored at four and a half and five and a half. So, we're just going to burnish those edges up. And then we're also going to want. Um, you're going to want a closure. So I just got into my stash and had this gauze left over from a past project. Um, it doesn't need to be very long, maybe 11 inches, but you do want to put that down before we mat. So I'm just going to measure to get a basic, um, my center. So about two and three quarters. For this, I'll use some score tape. Hi, Renee. Oh, I love it too. So just on the center. You can use seam binding. You can use twine. I used that plaid ribbon that I had in my stash. Um, something, you know, flat that will be flat underneath your cardstock, of course. Yes, I agree. Hi, Renee. I'm glad you could join us. Now, we want to go ahead and map this whole thing. So I'll give you those sizes. Each section is four and a half by five and a half. And in the beginning of the video here, I mentioned I'm using the combination of Magical Christmas along with the new cut aparts from um christmas greetings for our little cards and i cut first i cut we're going to put these on the outside so i cut two squares four and three eighths by five and three eighths oh penny i know isn't it gorgeous now this is one inch so this is seven eighths of an inch. 
and it's the same length, five and three eighths. I already did um, distress ink the edges. I use sepia. So I'm going to go ahead now and put this down with my art glitter glue. Penny, when I Penny um, is an artist, and when I saw your when I saw a lot of these cut aparts, Penny, it just reminded me of the work you do. I thought it was so perfect, and I knew you were going to love it when you saw it. Like I said, if you're a card maker, you're going to love it. If you're not really a card maker, these little three by four cards are absolutely the way to go. They make great tags. It's down. They make um, gift cards just if you need a quick gift card to go on a gift bag. So make sure that's down on the ribbon. So just use the back side. And again, this is seven eighths of an inch by five and three eighths. Oh, I can't wait to see him. And I thought this one with the reindeer was just so perfect with Santa. And it's his reindeer. Now this is also a fun project for you that have stores or if you teach classes and you want a, um, a cute make and take, something that um, you can have somebody have if you're able to have people in your store. I know a lot of stores are back to open, which we're so grateful for. A great project for, for like your Super Saturday or if you're doing anything for Black Friday. And I am going to, you know, always reburnish those score lines so that they're nice and crisp. Now this I'll end up cutting, but for the inside I chose the plaid, which is the back side of that monochromatic. I love that. And we're going to put the boxes we create right on top. So you want to have, you do want to have these down first. Four and three eighths by five and three eighths, same measurements as the front. This would be a really nice hostess uh, gift if you're going, even you know, your daughters, your sons, anybody's for Thanksgiving. What a cute gift to take along and put it in cellophane, wrap it up with a gorgeous bow. I just lost my pencil. Wilbur will find it. <laughs> and uh, it's a really nice, it's just a nice housewarming gift if you have somebody moving into their home this fall. And again, you can use this fall splendor. And same size, seven eighths by five and three eighths for my spine piece. Yeah, if you're having any trouble, you might want to just go out and come back in again. Can also be your internet if you're having any um any issues. Oh, hi Trisha. Well, Wilbur's doing fine. I think he he's asleep. So now my little book is created, and we can go ahead and cut. We've already done the scoring for our box, so I want to burnish up my score lines first.
that's what's so awesome about this if you're having trouble on facebook or on youtube you can come back and go into one of the other either youtube or um or facebook and we're going to create both of these the exact same way but if you want if you've never created one Um, you might want to watch me cut first. So I'm just going up my score line. And I'm going to cut off the two bottom squares. So they're completely gone. I'm going to angle here. And I am going to cut straight across. And I'll just take a little corner off of that. And that's what you're going to be left with. He did very well at the wedding for a beagle. He was very happy to have a bunch of people. Then we're going to repeat the same thing here. Straight up. So we cut apart those four squares. Cut off the bottom. I'm just going to angle into that inside one. And we'll just clean off that corner and... I like to mat this before I put my box together, and I do like to use clothespins with it. The matting that I cut that's going to go on this inside square is three and five eighths by two and five eighths. And that will fit perfectly in the center. And again, I thought this looked so cute. This says, I don't know if you can see it, reindeer stalls. Hey, Brenda, how are you? So we have reindeer stalls. And that is what the cut aparts are I chose was the nature ones. I'm so excited when I saw this from Authentique. We never have enough cut aparts, right? Now you have six brand new sheets of three by four cut apart and you can go crazy. I didn't, I didn't do any matting of the sides. If you want to, it's three eighths of an inch by three and five eighths long. Totally, you're, you know, up to you. I'm going to let that dry for a minute. We're going to repeat the same thing. Oh, you just asked how Wilbur is and actually he's not asleep. He just came up to uh, my studio window and he's out. He's out in the yard. He must have heard his name, Tricia. And I have it on good authority. I think there's going to be another fall surprise from Authentic. So I'm waiting to see. Do the exact same thing. Cut straight up. Cut the two on the bottom off. And cut straight across. Hi, Kathy. Straight up. Same size, two and five eighths wide, three and five eighths long. And right in the center. I don't know. He hasn't come inside yet. He did go in the kennel. So we'll see where Wilbur heads. <laughs> I'm going back to the first one. And we do want to reburnish these score lines. Oops, because we want this to be square. Make sure you get those little connector pieces.
Okay. First thing we're going to do is the tabs. Now that's going to go right on the inside. Maybe. There we go. Once you have it placed so it's even, you can add your clothespin. While that's holding it shut, we'll go ahead and do the same with our second box. And just take the time to go back and do the burnishing. You'll be glad you did. Now we'll let that box dry and I'm going to fold the bottom down and the sides over and we're going to attach them and you want to make sure so you don't want anything sticking see how that's kind of off to the side you want it to come in so I always glue this down Put it on your work surface. And that way you can see if your sides are square or sticking out. Okay, once I do that, I know I can put my clothespin down on the inside there. Whoops, making sure we don't push that out. And then while that dries, we'll do the second one. Again, I like to put mine down on my work surface on my lines and square it up. Whatever little trick works for you. Just hold it tight for a moment. And let's put our book box down on our book. Again, I just eyeball. You can measure, definitely can measure if you want. And it looks like I have about a little over an eighth of an inch from the bottom, but you can place it anywhere you think it looks good. And see, I'm holding the side with my finger so that it stays square. I'm going to have to hold it for a minute. Then you can go in with your bone folder. And you do want to look down in there and make sure the bottom flap is attached to the base of the, the little book here. OK, 
Okay. We're going to do the same with the second one. So I'm just going to now use a little uh, guide here. So I use my my one inch spacer. It can be your ruler. Again, you can just eyeball it. Oh, I won't. In fact, I was thinking, yes, I am actually going to send um, this one out to someone today. Okay, my side was a little bit off, so I'm pushing it. There we go. I want it square, so just push it out there. No, you can't have this one. You get to have this one. I'm sending this one to one of our, our viewers here. Again, make sure everything's down. You don't want a gap there. Just takes a few minutes. Not hard. Just takes a few minutes. Isn't that cute? So the envelopes, I did go ahead. Um, we already made one. No, we haven't even made one together, but I want to show you something. In the box, I put them in upside down so the tabs are down. And we'll make the one together here. These are the coin envelopes. that, And we scored the one. But I went ahead and pre-made um, first five. I did use the Artisan cardstock. With the Spectrum cardstock, um, that is coordinating with this collection would be really adorable for your envelopes. They're not quite as heavy. And um, so it's totally up to you. You can use any cardstock you want. So the one that we've already cut and we already scored looks like this. And we have to cut a couple of things. So we're going to cut off these two outside pieces. And when I cut these, I want to show you. You want to cut, here's your score line. I cut the top of it because I want the whole thing gone. I want this to be just a hair shorter than the center. Same thing, straight up. And then I'm going to cut at the top of the score line. And you'll see why. It just helps with folding our flap over. We're going to remove these two outside pieces. Same thing, I'm cutting to the left on the inside of my score line. And then just down the middle. And so down the middle, because we're going to, well, you can if you want. I'll show you. I angle mine on policy envelopes. And that's what you'll be left with. I did this one in there. This one is not scored correctly, um, and it will still work, so I'm going to cut one more time with you. I don't know why I only scored that one at one and a half. It's the two and the five and a half, so we're going to, I'm going to cut this one again. I do need the two inches on the left-hand side. And all these uh, measurements were given in the first. Ignore in the beginning when I show you the second way to, or the first way to score these policy envelopes. I shouldn't have done that because it can be confusing. Oh, I'll show you those again. We did the three by four cards. So the, the box, this is a card box. We have the policy envelopes that fit our three by four, four cards on the right-hand side. And that's what's inside of there. Now let's furnish those score lines. 
Oh, I still need those. Okay. This is the top flap that's going to fold over. You can leave them square. I like to miter the edges. And then on the bottom where that score line is, see, you want this to be a hair shorter. I'll show you that too. So we're going to go ahead and fold the bottom up. This is just an extra that I do to make sure I have the clearance when we fold that. I just trim this a little bit more on each side. Just a tiny bit. And the half inch down here at the bottom, I do the same thing as the top. I just miter in each corner. And you'll make six of these to go with your cards. Two inch is going to go on top of the bigger side. We're just going to glue that down. And these policy envelopes are really fun to make. You can make them for gift cards, store cards, uh, money, or these little three by four cards. Okay, we're going to glue the bottom. Just making sure I have room when this goes over. So I pick mine up and I push down so it because it's going to be a little tight. Especially with Artisan, it's a thicker cardstock. And then the top, I'm just going to fold it. You can leave it if you don't want to fold it to go in your box. And then inside the box is my other five. I pre-made them. And that's how you make your policy envelopes. And I stick it in upside down. And this will hold six made with your thicker cardstock. Cards. So we cut these in the beginning. Um, I've already made five with my cut aparts. And so let me show you how I did the cut aparts. So I took one whole sheet and just cut them apart. And I'll make one more with you. We made the cards in the beginning. They're three by four. When you're cutting your cut apart cut aparts apart there we go i just go down the center of the red and i cut three strips and you'll end up with a strip like this because your cards are three by four these are perfect three by fours we need these to be two and seven eighths by three and seven eighths and i like my borders to be as, as symmetrical as possible so i've got more border at the bottom here than the top and I want this to be three and seven eighths of an inch. So I'll put my strip in my cutting, whatever you cut with. And we'll put it at three and seven eighths. So now my cards, <clears throat> excuse me, are three and seven eighths. Isn't, isn't that adorable? So I'm now going to cut these apart in the center. So hopefully I can get the same amount on each one. But I want to use this one. But I need this to be two and seven eighths. So in my cutter, I'm just going to put it um, minor sixteenths. So I'm going on this 15 sixteenth, or you can just put a tiny bit in. They don't have to be exact. We're good there. So I'll move it to two and seven eighths. But I want my borders to be kind of the same. And, I mean, you don't have to do it to where it's completely perfect like that if you don't want to. <laughs> I just, I like it that way. And so now our card is two and seven eighths by three and seven eighths. Oh, my hot glue gun just got stuck. I've got my hot glue gun on. Okay. 
Um, yeah, it's it's the same, and I can do it again. Yeah, you just do the same scoring, but then you cut it apart at five and seven eighths. So when you cut it apart, so remember how I showed you we, we scored the 12 by 12 at one half, four and three fourths. Then we turn the full 12 by 12. This is because um, Teresa is asking. Then you score um, two inches and five and a half. Then you're going to cut it at five and seven eighths and you'll have one here and one there and the bottom will be extra. So I got um, hot glue there, but it won't, it won't matter. It won't show with the card here in a minute. And then the inside, I did the white and I cut these at two and three quarters by three and three quarters. So they're smaller and that's where you can write. And I'm using the Art Glitter Glue. And we do have it at CountryCraftCreations.com. And we'll have the new cut aparts on the website this afternoon. And your local scrapbook stores will be getting them in also. So now that'll fit right on the top. You could, you could make your cards a little bit bigger if you want. The reason I kept with three by four is because I can get all six cards out of one 12 by 12 sheet of cardstock that way. So it makes it a really economical project, especially if you are doing craft fairs or if you're a store doing a craft um, weekend, you're going to be able to get a lot of cards out of, you know, just one pack of paper. But there's my six cards using the three by fours. Again, um, these are for those times when a card is too much, but a tag is not enough. And they're just adorable. Look at that. Love this one. And Santa Claus. So I'm going to put this one in the front. You can also decorate those envelopes. If you're going to mail them, though, I wouldn't because I would print my labels in white. This is big enough to mail. And if you're going to do this as a gift, one thing that you can do too is you could cut off, see these, like the set of six, you could actually cut those stickers off and you could include it and then they would have that put on the back. So you can cut these stickers out and you could even cut a bunch more out and put them in another little envelope with some stamps in it. For the gift so the inside totally up to you if you want to decorate i am just going to take these two different uh stickers from the cut apart one is joy and one is peace yes you can definitely mail those you can mail them they're big enough to go through our mail system You could even make another little pocket, just a flat one, that you put your stamps. You can put some stamps in there, um, just six stamps, if you're doing it for the gift. So now I'm going to decorate the front here. We're going to tie, and I'll cut this. Of course, if you're going to mail this, you'll need to put it in a box to keep it from getting smashed. Now I have four cut aparts left. Oh, look how cute that is with that. Or you may want to go to the red ones. Because let's see, they'll, you're going to have half in green and half in red. Totally your choice. But I'm going to back that one in some black cardstock. Again, just a cute, simple little gift. Doesn't take much at all. Make my edges a little more even. And we have made this in, in about an hour. So 
I'm going to now, that I cut down, so I'm going to cut this piece of cardstock three by four. Now, again, you can see how cute these are. Mail them out to your friends. Maybe uh, take them to someone that is in a nursing home or, you know, a field learning, uh, living center somewhere so they have some cards that they can send out. What a nice gift that would be to have for the residents or for your family. Or for giveaways, for craft fairs, so many uses. This I'm going to pop up on pop on the. I always call them pop dots. They're not pop dots, guys. They're called foam squares. There we go. You know, too many tongue twisters. Cut aparts, foam squares, foam dots. A couple in there, so we have. And see how cute. And then I had I have these poinsettias left from years ago. To kind of pop this one up a little bit more so it's not so flat. And that's all I put on this one. Oh, I did use some of the stickers. Let me show you the sticker was the circle. And I just cut it in half and I poked half there and half there. So probably, oh, yeah, I'll do the same here with one of them. Take the back off. Even fun to leave at your neighbor's door. Just a little gift. Right at an angle. And I'll use my hot glue. I haven't used this one in a while. I usually just use my art glitter glue. <laughs> this thing is this thing is different. It's awful messy too. Not my favorite, but I can't find my big one. Oh, you guys give me lots of ideas. Didn't want to stay up, did it? That's okay. Isn't that pretty? Looks like there's snow and we've got the bunnies. And then if you want to add a little bit more like I did here, I've already used that. So I do want to add, here we go. We can add. Definitely Sanda's workshop down here at the bottom. You could tie a bow or maybe we just want some a little bit of floral sticking out, but this is definitely too big. So I'm going to cut this in half. You can just stick half of it there. You can use the other half if you want, or you can just set it aside. Uh -huh. I do like that. Put it up at the top. Just kind of to fill those areas. Whoa. There we go. And there you guys go. So that, oh, this let me show you let's make that I have to make that this was this big long one but we have some smaller ones here and you can even use any tags that you want but it's always fun to have one that is already to and from and this one is smaller I still want to back it on cardstock though and then we're going to poke a hole Hi, Kat. How are you? So I'm just going to, let's see, cut around.
Remember, fussy cutting does not have to be perfect. Okay, for this one, I'll just use my little hole punch. Yeah, that's the little side. If you have one that's even smaller, but that works. I have a piece of that left. So I you can put it in the spine, you can put it in the front. I'm just going to go ahead with my crocodile here. Punch a hole. So I did mine so it's more towards the front. Come through the back. And how many of you have girls and you used to do topsies? Always used to do topsies on my granddaughters. And that's what that reminds me of. So let me tie this closed. Sorry about my camera. I don't know why it's jumping. And I do tie this. Again, and then you can just add your tag. And I cross over the top. You can tie it into a bow or just knots. This one's kind of little, so we'll just keep the knots. And then we have our little to and from. And we have such wonderful little gifts. So I hope that this helps, especially if you're not a card maker, and uh, gives you some ideas how to put together some really quick cards. Like I said, these... These are great little cards for those times when um, a tag is, is, you know, a tag's not enough, but a card's too much. And again, you can use those in the envelopes. And you can also put your gift card inside of there. And if you're using the artisan card stock, it's nice and heavy. So this is going to go through the mail great. Without you could even put the gift card inside this little card, it'll fit perfect. And then you have just a really fun, quick little gift that you can make in under an hour. So, thanks everybody for joining me. I hope you enjoy this. And again, the paper line is called Christmas Greetings, and it's just six sheets packed full of Christmas cut aparts. Really great. Also, combine them with your 6x6 six six paper pad. Combine them with Magical Christmas. You can use the back of the paper collection because you've got now some other designs to really expand your line of Magical Christmas. See how cute. Thanks, everybody. And be sure to also post what you make over on Everything Authentique. That's our sister page. So you can post um, what you make using your past or the brand new collections, especially Magical Christmas. We'd love to see what you make, but you do have to send a friend request. So be sure to send a request over and we'll get you added. And you can check out what everybody's making with the authentic papers. By, oh, the vintage book is five and a half by four and a half. So it's not, you can see it fits in the palm of my hand. 
and it holds those three by four cards and the envelopes on the inside just super cute bye everybody see you next week on authentique